We conclude our series on Romans this morning, and for several weeks we studied at first the freedom from condemnation we have in Romans 8, 1 through 4. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Then we studied the new life in Jesus, Romans 8, verses 5 through 14. That we're called to new life in Jesus. It's a life that is according to the Spirit, not according to the flesh. Last week, we talked about the power of full engagement. That God calls us to be part of the greatest story ever told. Which means that we need to be in God's story. Characters that are teachable. That's one who accepts Jesus as Savior and Lord. Characters who are on a mission from God. To be a part of something greater than ourselves. Characters who face difficulty in conflict at times. It's, it's part of the story, whether they're crosses or thorns. And then characters who are promised a happy ending. God gets the last word. And the last word is good. Today, the title of this communion mes meditation is simply nothing. Nothing. Nothing will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Today is an assurance from God. Let's read God's word this morning. Amen. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? It is Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes, who prays for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? And as it is written, for your sake we are being killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. Now in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced, I am sure, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Jesus, I ask in your name this morning that you bless this holy word, that it may change our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not withhold his own son but give him up for all of us. Will he not with him also give us everything else? God did not spare his own son. That is the final and ultimate guarantee that he will give us everything we need. Genesis 22, 12. Abraham offered his son to God. Now God did not require Abraham to follow through on this sacrifice. What God did not ask of Abraham, God did himself. God stops Abraham from doing that. But God is so loyal to us that he sacrifices his only son for us. We can trust loyalty like that. Who will bring any charges against God's elect? It is God who justifies. 
Remember that justification is one of those fancy seminary words? It means this. Just as if I never sinned. That's what justification means. Just as if I never sinned. Doesn't mean we never sinned. It means that God has covered it through what Jesus has done for us. Has forgiven us. And offers us new life. Who is to condemn? It's Christ Jesus who died. Yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who prays for us. The Daily Study Bible tells us, God has acquitted us, therefore no one can condemn us. In the book of Revelation, Satan is called the accuser of the brethren, of the brothers and sisters who follow God. But the accuser of the brethren and the sistren has no power over us. Christ is risen, therefore nothing can separate us from him. Let's take a quick, quick closer look. Jesus died. He rose again. He is at the right hand of God. If anyone could condemn us, he could. But Jesus is there praying for us on our behalf. I'll always remember the comfortable words in the communion liturgy of the Episcopal Church, which I was raised in. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Jesus Christ said to those, to all who truly turned to Him. Come unto me, all you that travel and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, so that whosoever believeth on Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul said. This is a true saying and worthy of all people to be received. That Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John said. If anyone sinned, we have an advocate. We have a defense attorney. We have a lawyer with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the perfect offering. In the Book of Common Prayer, it said propitiation. <clears throat> means perfect offering for the sins of the whole world. Not for ours only but for the sins of the whole world. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Well, hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword, as it is written, for your sake, we are being slaughtered all day long. We are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. Knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors to him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present, nor things to come, nor power, nor height, nor depth, nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word separate is also translated put asunder. To put asunder. Remember what Jesus said? What God hath joined together is talking about marriage. Let no man, let no one put asunder. That God wants a hedge of protection around marriage. There's an even greater hedge of protection around our relationship with Him. But remember when Jesus, we talk about the marriage in the marriage ceremony, that marriage is to, uh, is to be an example of Christ love and the relationship that Jesus has for the church. Hardship means literally pressure. That pressure will not separate us from the love of Christ. Distress is related to the narrow way. When Jesus says, you know, wide and easy is the way to hell and many follow it, but narrow is the way that leads to life. St. Paul is talking about the narrow way that when we're under pressure and when we're under persecution or hassle, that even when we get constricted on our inside, that will not separate us from the love of Christ. Persecution was an experience of the early church. And amazingly, when it happens, they were flown so far and wide that the church grew and grew. Famine, nakedness, peril. That was St. Paul's experience in his life. He writes about it. Sword was the reality of Rome. 
and how Paul would pay the supreme sacrifice for his life. Verse 36, we are counted as sheep to be slaughtered. That's a quote from Psalm 44, 22. You know, when I, the first time when I walked into Mercer County Jail, one of the first times when I walked into Mercer County Jail, I could feel, I, I heard that scripture in my heart. Or how about Cassie Bernal? Remember Columbine? Do you believe in God? Yes, I do. And she reigns forever with Jesus. You know, it's been said, you haven't really lived until you're willing to die for something. St. Paul also uses a word that's only used once in the New Testament. Conquerors. That we are conquerors only used once. That no matter what we're facing, we are super conquerors. We don't have to get out of something. Maybe we just need to get more into it. With Jesus. Neither death nor life. We live with Christ on earth. We die with Him and we rise with Him. Nothing will separate us with Him. Nor angels. Remember St. Paul said for our struggles. We, your struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. No, no fallen angel, no Satan is going to separate us from the love of God. Nor things present, nor things to come. In Jesus' time, in St. Paul's time, there, were just, there was this present age and there was the age to come. Our bond with Jesus will be the same. Nor powers, no malign influences, nor height, nor depth. I learned something new this week that I didn't know. Many things I learned. This relates to astrology. Nor height, nor depth. No, no star high in the sky. No star close to you with its mystery. People believed that their, back then that their lives were under the, 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 the stars. That the stars controlled their lives. You know, the horoscope? I call it a horoscope. St. <laughs> Paul is saying that the stars cannot hurt you if they're far away or if they're close to you. When they're rising and then they're setting. You're not under astrology. You're under Jesus Christ. Nor, nor anything else in all creation. This blew my mind. The translation literally means any other creation. So once and for all, we don't have to worry about life on Mars. It will not separate our aliens or astrology. Nothing will separate us. From the love of Christ. As we prepare for Lent, 24 hours that change the world, may we re up to be a part of the greatest story ever told. May we re up to be a part of the greatest story ever told. In the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus said to God, If there's any way that this cup could pass from me, please. May it pass. God answered Jesus. Jesus, you need to die for the sins of the world. God didn't say to him, oh no, there's a couple of, uh, you know, if you follow all the law, you'll be okay. If you do this, if you do that, you'll be okay. God said, Jesus, you are the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way to be saved. And those who follow you, Jesus, there was no plan A, B, and C. It was just plan A. Jesus died on the cross for the sins of the world. And today I proclaim to you under the authority of the blood of Jesus Christ and is rising again. Nothing in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Jesus, our Lord. Now, let's pray together. Jesus, 
we love you. We give you thanks and praise. And now, as we come to the communion table, help us to remember, help us to receive, and help us to rejoice that we are cleansed and forgiven and given new life to be a, power, to be a part of something greater than ourselves. We have come to believe that a power greater than ourselves can restore us. And it's you, Jesus. We celebrate your table this day. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Thank you.